Welcome back guys to another episode of Decentralized Chain is for Oz bringing you the latest news, reviews and blockchain tech. If this is your first time here and you want to learn more about upcoming crypto projects, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button below to stay up to date with all my latest content. If you are a returning visitor, I appreciate the support. So don't forget to hit that like button as you have been doing all along. Now, today we are going to be talking to Christina Jin, who is the chief marketing officer for Ultra Alpha. They're looking to bring a wealth management platform into the digital asset space. Plenty of these exist within traditional markets, but clearly not within the digital space. And they're looking to bridge that gap. And we're going to speak to Christina. We're going to actually find out what do wealth management platforms do exactly? What does Christina do outside of crypto? How do the mechanics of the platform actually work? We're going to explore the strategic partnership they have also with Bitmax, I, with Bitmax.io. Now, interestingly enough, while I'm talking about Bitmax, I was speaking to Christina earlier today and we were texting back and forth, just trying to organize the URL and the timings for the interview. And she mentioned, hey, Feroz, just to let you know, we're going to have someone else join us for the interview as well, because some of the questions you're planning to ask, you know, they're quite in depth and we'd like to just have a bit more coverage within that space. So I said, hey, not a problem. The more, the merrier. And funny enough, guess who decided to join in the interview interview? It was George Cow, CEO of Bitmax. Now, it was a great interview, lots of laughs, lots of fun. And rather than me telling you exactly what went down, let's jump straight in and see exactly what they had to say. Christina, thank you so much for coming on the show. And equally, I see a guest in the background as well, who I was completely not expecting whatsoever. <laughs> and so, uh, George, thank you for yeah, coming well. on the show as well. Hi. I mean, before we all jump straight into Ultra Alpha and Bitmax, as people may have guessed by the thumbnail and by the title of the video, I think it's always cool just to understand a little bit about the people we're speaking to outside of the project. So, Christina, over to you. I mean, what do you do for fun? Who are you outside of you know, being a CMO and, you know, working as part of the Ultra Alpha team? So I was born in New Zealand and I was raised in Auckland in China. Mm -hmm. And I graduated from New York University with a master's degree in marketing. Mm -hmm. And I co-founded a cross-border e-commerce high top platform in, when I was in college. And um, I worked in Ogilvy and Mather and PMW. After I entered the blockchain field at the beginning of 2018, I served as a CMO of Anchor Network. Okay. And I'm mainly responsible for the business development, mm -hmm. branding, and marketing efforts. Okay. Yeah, and in my spare time, I like traveling, reading, and painting. Okay. And uh, George, I know you've been around in the scene for a while, but yes. you know, for those who know you as the CEO of Bitmax, what are you when you're not the CEO of Bitmax? I suppose that's a bit of a tough one because when you're running your own company, you're 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 always entwined in terms of I suppose your hobby, your passion, etc. Yeah. But outside of it, when you're not talking about Bitmax, what what do you do, George, for fun? Well, Bitmax is pretty much a hundred percent of my life <laughs> right now for a year. I, I really don't have a, any social life, you know, except for Bitmax. I never, I don't think I even have dinner with my friends for the past eight months. So you know, there is no life, no personal life. But before that, before Bitmax, I do a lot of stuff. I I, I was a, I think I'm pretty a, a pretty good Texas Hold'em player. Mm -hmm. uh, I do hiking a lot and I enjoy workout. But that's way before Bitmax. Well, I suppose our viewers would be happy to hear that George is 100% focused on Bitmax. <laughs> There's no fun for George. <laughs> right, so I, look, guys. I didn't, I didn't know that before before I started. <laughs> it was totally out of expectation. Well, good. Well, at least we got the icebreakers out of the way. I mean. I suppose today we're here to talk about uh, Ultra Alpha and sure we'll touch on a bit of Bitmax as well. But, you know, thank you. For, thank you to both of you for really making the time to you know come on the show and, uh, you know, talk to us. And, and uh, thank you for being subscribed. So I hope you subscribe both of you. I hope you subscribe to this channel. That's right. <laughs> right. OK, so now, I mean, jumping straight in, uh, let's uh, let's let's talk about Ultra Alpha, Christina. I mean, what are you on the face of it as a you know, if, if you kind of look at a very simplified way, what is it you guys are building? So we are committed to building out a professional digital asset management platform mm -hmm. with a mission to provide a broad selection of quality digital asset management products okay. for our users. And we will be collaborating closely with Bimax.io, mm -hmm. 
to further support the structural optimization of digital asset management industry. So, I mean, if if we kind of look at it more of a simplified term, what is it that you guys are actually looking to solve here? Actually, well, you know, clearly there there must be a I don't want to say a problem, but there must clearly be a gap in the market, and you've seen an opportunity to, you know, one of a better word, capitalize, but also provide a service, right? So, what is it that that you're actually doing in terms of a service perspective? Yeah, definitely. So right now, the common issue in the digital asset industry is that、um, investors have limited access to good investment products.、Mm-hmm. Well, it is also difficult for Trading teams or management firms to、mm-hmm. reach out to the right investors for their fundraising. Okay.、Um, the root cause to this issue derives from a lack of formal broker dealer structure in the digital asset industry. Okay. So in traditional finance,、um, broker dealer function is an integral part of capital market structure, connecting investor and investment products. And also for the client trading、mm-hmm. and the capital raising needs. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, adding adding some point from、yeah. from the view of a CEO of exchange. So oftentimes, a lot of user comes to me say, "Hey, George, what should I invest? Is there any good investment product that can、mm-hmm. I can invest in?" Unfortunately, there is not.、Um, one is like what Chris says: there's no lack of broker dealer function. And there is no asset management function in this industry.、Mm-hmm. And two is even if there is, there's, there is a security issue. One thing, two is audit issue, credibility issue, and three is those very well performed firm. Why would they need your money as a retail client? Because、mm-hmm. I mean, nobody as a I run a hedge fund before. The, the the pain point is I don't want to talk to 100 investors because. That means I don't have even have time to watch the market. I have to pick up the phones every minute.、Mm-hmm. So ideally, so that's why we came up with the idea. We want to provide the asset management platform, so we do all the works for the traders. The trader can focus on trading. We help them raise the money. We help them man- manage the fund. We help them provide PNL report and do the auditing. And however, and to the users, we are platform of a serious fund, so they can choose the product from platform every. Trading track record, PN track record is audited by us,、okay. and the fund is owned by us. Therefore, there,、uh, therefore, so the security issue is solved, and the trust loss problem is solved because almost audited by us.、Mm-hmm. We see a great chance to provide a bridge between the investors and the trading teams. Thank you, thank you. That was.、Um... <laughs> that answers my next question, which was really around what is your unique、mm-hmm. selling point. But no, thank you. I mean, it was very clear in terms of understanding exactly how you sort of come to、mm-hmm. what you're doing. So no, that's really good. Now, I, I suppose let's talk about the actual platform itself,、um, because when I was sort of going through the sort of Telegram communities and just sort of my various researches, I've noticed that you know individuals, whoever they may be, are are using certain terms within this project interchangeably, right? And there seems to be a few key elements that you have. You've got ultra alpha, as in the platform. You've mentioned ultra alpha, as in the fund. And then there's also a token utility element. So let's first just start between ultra alpha and ultra fund. Sure. What what do we have here exactly? Yeah, ultra alpha is the name of the platform, and ultra fund is just one of the investment products on、mm-hmm. the platform. And UAT token is the utility token issued by Ultra Platform. So token holders will be allowed a qualified for all the rights and benefits、uh-huh. on the platform. The limit of five hundred million UAT is strictly imposed without any further increase. Okay, and let's. I, I want to understand how someone actually uses the platform. And I suppose let's try and simplify it as much as we can. So, as an investor coming in with liquidity, I'm I'm looking for an investment or a product. And so, explain to me the flow of process as simply as you can when I come to the actual platform itself. How how does that work? Definitely. So, by investing in any of the products、oh. on the platform. The investor receives some number of UAT tokens. Okay. And the number of UAT tokens he receives is determined by a number of facts, including 
the supply and demand of the product and also the amount of the investment. And the whole investment process is as simple as three steps. So first, you go onto the official Alpha Platform website. Mm -hmm. You select the um, investment products that you want to invest in. Okay. And then finally, you uh, follow the simply follow the instructions and finish the investment okay. process. Okay. So let me let me just drill down a bit more into just some of those steps, right? So when I when I when I land in your platform, what is my primary investment that I'm that I'm investing with? Uh, is it a fiat? I you know, pounds or dollars, depending on where you're, what jurisdiction you're from. Am I investing with cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ethereum? Uh, how does that first part actually sort of go through? Yeah, sure. Uh, right now, I think at the first stage, the platform only takes digital currency. Uh, okay. For example, we have USDT or PAX and stable coins as mm -hmm. first step. In the future, we may open Ethereum and Bitcoin. Those, okay. Like, we consider it as cash equivalent bitcoins. Uh, I mean, okay. token. Yes, fiat is a different story. Hopefully, yep. we can get there by maybe next year, but that's mm -hmm. a different story. All right. So I suppose I would need to make sure that I have USDT basically in order to be able to invest in the fund. Right now, the next bit that I'm interested in, in is actually I've got say a hundred thousand US dollars in USDT stablecoin. Now, these funds that you talk about. Can you give us a couple of examples of what type of funds they may be? Am I, am I investing in a Bitcoin tracker, an Ethereum tracker, or maybe a pot of cross assets? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, sure. I think Chris can give us a, a brief introduction for Ash Alpha Fund, and I'll give a, a broader, broader um, kind of overview of the follow up listing fund. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Alpha Alpha Fund has many years of electronic trading experience of Wall Street from bonds um, and uh, equities to future and forex. Mm -hmm. um, they have a really great record of winning history. Um, so their market, ma uh, market making strategy is built upon the volatility consideration and also has a lot of risk control. Okay. Yeah, to short, it's a quantitative trading fund and the average trading period, average holding period is somewhere between minutes to hours. Mm -hmm. So the company is a relatively high frequency quantitative trading okay. fund. Mm -hmm. And you know, this, that, that is the first fund we list on Arch Alpha and platform. The, the reason I named it Arch Alpha Fund because one is the first fund, two is actually um, the, the founder of the fund is actually the founding team of BMAX we speak of. So we want to make it public and you know, so that our investors can benefit from mm -hmm. the, the experience of the team. However, I think I think going forward, um, there will be multiple types of fund will be listed on the Alpha platform. Of course, quantitative fund is the one who has the largest, uh, I would say, investor base and it's well, very well recognized. Okay. But for the reason that one is, it's relatively high sharp ratio and mm -hmm. it's a multi multi neutral strategy can provide a, a risk aversion kind of a consistent return. That's one thing. But um, aside from that, we'll also have long short fund. We will also have pair trading strategy. We also have CTA fund. We may have those token fund who invest in the token projects, mm -hmm. um, you know, as an incubator fund. So okay. it's, it's really a platform of listing different kinds of fund. As long as the team has a very good track record, has a confidence of manage money, mm -hmm. and it, pro it proved to be has lots of transparency and, and experience in this field, we okay. are willing to talk to them. To, you know, list them. Okay, so, and I suppose let, let's let, let's finish up with the last stage in the platform, which is sure. so I've got my USDT. I have invested in one of your potential funds, and mm -hmm. now I'm looking at my return. Now I'm curious, what do I get back as a return from that fund? Do I get an increase in USDT? Do I get an allocation of your utility token as well? What does that well, look like? What does that return look like exactly? Yes, yes. Normally, I would say, for example, for the Archer Alpha Fund, um, you get if the return is say twenty percent mm -hmm. for the month, you get a you get a you get the cash back in USDT. Okay. Right, but you have to split the PML with the team. So, for example, for the Archer Alpha Fund, you got a sixty percent of the return. The team got a thirty percent of the return, and the rest, the ten percent, will be used to purchase. 
uh, UAT token from the secondary market and send to the permanent lock address. So that's how it works as an example. Mm -hmm. A different fund can maybe have different, you know, uh, profit sharing mechanism. Some fund may charge less, they will charge 20%. Some fund may charge high, so okay. even you know, 50%. But that's the, that's the mechanism. Excellent. Well, look, thank you very much. I mean, that is a, a wonderful word, a very simplified way of looking at how the platform works. So I, so I hope the viewers understand. I certainly understand, but then I'm from a very similar background <laughs> so but no I, thank you very much so that was that was that was really cool to see now let's talk a bit more about uh the team partners and goals because clearly everybody must be thinking why do we have ultra alpha and then why do we have bitmax on here as well at the same time what is going on so let's uh, let's let's explore a bit of the actual general team mechanics so i know um christina you touched on it earlier on uh, so you're you're the cmo um of ultra alpha uh, previously, you've also been a CMO of uh, Anchor, which is you know quite a successful project as well in the past. And likewise, uh, Lucy, who is also the CEO of Ultra Alpha, is um, previous CEO or a founder of Lambda Project. I think it's like a top 100 uh, token. Am I am I correct in making those assumptions? She was the CMO of Lambda. Okay, before. got it. And now she's the CEO. Okay, excellent. So. Mm -hmm. What I do like is clearly you're very well experienced within this space and have worked with many <laughs> successful projects, which certainly should be uh, music to our viewers who are interested in uh, Ultra Alpha as a, as a project overall. Now, what I'd like to do is uh, explore this uh, relationship uh, that we have with, with Bitmax as well, because I think it's uh, quite, a, quite an interesting piece overall. And... You know, I'm referring to some of my notes that I've made as well. If I if I'm looking down, because uh, there's a, there's a lot to remember in these interviews from my perspective, and uh, so there's a strategic partnership here with Bitmax and historically uh, Ultra Alpha. You know, you've obviously been the primary market makers uh, for Bitmax in terms of performance around that space. Now, what I am curious about here is actually a couple of things. First of all, I've used the term market maker and those who are quite well in the space may understand what that term is and some may not so i think if we kind of go back to basics a bit you used to be market makers for bitmax now what does a market maker do just at a high level what, what is your function as a market maker so market making in a broad term is a type of strategy that places passive orders uh, and control liquidity Mm -hmm. and generally uh, making profits from capturing the bid ask spread across various markets. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so market maker actually has two levels of market maker. When we refer to market, we talk about market makers. Basically, you're talking about it in, I mean, two different levels. Mm -hmm. One is there is a market maker who is obligated to provide liquidity, to, you know, post orders and, and mm -hmm. DBO, DBO to provide liquidity to the market. So those market makers we often see from NYSE, who is called a designated market maker program. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of market makers on NASDAQ. Um, their obligations provide the liquidity in return to get back trade. So that's one type of market maker. And oftentimes in the trading world, when we see market maker, sometimes you refer to the second category, meaning it is a market making strategy, meaning that the, 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 the primary source of revenue coming from provided liquidity, provide bid and ask code from the both sides, and you capture a scrap spread. Mm -hmm. So um, this type of strategy was post only strategy, I call a passive trading strategy, we call it market making strategy, but they do not have the obligation to post it inside. Okay. So these are two different terms of market maker. Mm -hmm. And by saying Archer Alpha Fund is the primary market maker of uh, BIMAX before, yes. uh, we are referring to they are obligated to post liquidity with BIMAX. Okay. So yes, but they are again they are affiliated entity, but it's separate independent entity mm -hmm. because as an exchange we do not allow to trade. So they are they are indif I mean independent entity. Okay, thank you very much. And I suppose one of the other questions that I, that kind of segues off this is, you know, what are the sort of average returns that this type of strategy tends to yield or has yielded for you in the past? Christine will be very happy to answer the question. <laughs> So, That's the juicy part, yes. Yes. <laughs> Alpha as a platform cannot speak on behalf of any fund managers mm -hmm. on our platform Understood. Uh, regarding performance projections. Uh, we are in the process of auditing uh, our fund managers 
um, their trading history and PNL. Okay. But the past performance record doesn't represent future. Yes, of course. Yep. So we will publish performance projection uh, reports on our platform on a regular basis. Okay. Yeah, just to add some color to the historical <laughs> performance, it it is it is very high that I do not want to give out just because I don't want to give false expectations. Yes. No, no, of course. It. Yes, but it, it it is it is incredibly high. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take whatever I can get from that. <laughs> right, perfect. Well, look, um, let's let's talk about roadmap um, in terms of what's what's coming up. So, myself, the community, what what should we be excited about? Say over the next three to six months. Yes. Yeah. So the first investment products will be test launched on our platform within the next coming week. And then around 1st of August, we're going to do a public sale mm -hmm. on Max.io. And then afterwards, the UAT token will be listed on Max.io for primary listing. And then uh, UAT will be listed on all other top tier exchanges. Okay. Let, let me. I'm, I'm going to ask one question here, actually, and we're going to dial back a bit to what we started off earlier on, right? Because um, you mentioned UAT on the secondary markets now, and we also talked about when we invest in a fund, we invest, you know, with a stable coin such as USDT. So the uh, question needs to be asked here is, you know, there are going to be speculators. I, let, let, me, let me rewind a bit more. There, there's always two types of people that are invested in a project, right? There are those who believe in the project, that want to see the project succeed and grow with the project and sort of invest from that perspective. And then we also have the other side, which is completely natural. Those who, you know, when moon, when's my Lamborghini come, et cetera, et cetera, right? And I'm not going to go too much into that. But uh, you mentioned secondary markets. No. So why would I purchase the UAT token if... I just invest in your fund through USDT and I'm getting back a return. What's the what's the need for me to do that on the secondary market, right? Other, I mean, you know, there is a speculation element. I get that. But I'm, I'm just curious from that perspective. And maybe I didn't pick it up early enough when you were going through your examples. Sure. You can, you can actually think of UAT token as a fund enemy token, meaning that every single um, operations you want to do with a platform, you have to use your UAT token. So, mm -hmm. for example... If you want to check your um, your the, the investment the product, if you want to check its trading history, okay, you need to pay UAT token. Mm -hmm. So if you want to see, hey, what is my real time portfolio looks like, you have to pay UAT token. So if you want to switch between investment product, hey, I want to switch between fund one to fund two because I see fund two has better performance in the past months. You have to spend the UAT token. Okay, and if you want to early withdraw. You have to spend or UAT token, so the you can view UAT token as a utility token that performs all the operations uh, on the on the platform. Okay, okay, and so that'd be one of the reasons why I would, uh, beyond looking at it from an investment perspective, I would purchase that on the secondary market in order to perform certain functions within the platform, which the token under right. to do That's basically. Right. Okay, okay, thank you. So now let's talk about raise. Um, I'm sure people's ears are burning about how much, when, who, who's locked in, et cetera, et cetera. So let's, uh, let's, let's, talk, let's talk some figures, actually. So how much are you looking to raise for the project in general? <laughs> you want to answer the question? <laughs> yes, so we, we, we plan to raise 10 million in total from private sale and public sale altogether. So we already finished the private sale. So for public sale, we're trying to raise um, from one to $2 million to, to reach okay. 10 million. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the total supply of UAT is around 500 million, right, Christina? You mentioned that earlier on. Okay, yeah. got it. Strictly imposed without any further increase. That's right. Okay. And and how and how is the sort of allocation of all these tokens uh, split? So 40% are for um, pre-sales, private sale and public sale. And 40% are for investment mining. And 20% are for the team. Okay. Now, you mentioned sort of your pre-sale is uh, already complete and you've kind of just got the public sale coming up. And mm -hmm. so there's always, you know, and I'll ask the question, there will be people who are bought in pre-sale. There are going to be people that are bought in public and generally people want to be protected against, you know, volatile price movements, etc. Um, so what, what, I suppose, what reassurances do 
you know investors have that 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 there's not going to be some sort of I don't want to speculate on prices, but obviously some sort of stabilization, you know, needs to be in place to make it investable, right? Rather than, you know, thinking yeah. it's going to be a pump and dump for want of a better word. So, I mean, if you could explain maybe something around the sort of vesting, what sort of vestings and locks are there to kind of protect investors, buyers, et cetera, in general? Yes, vesting schedule. So 10% of the pre-sale portion will be locked unlocked and released on the first day when UET is listed on exchange. Okay. And then afterwards, every time when UET is listed on a top tier exchange, 5% mm -hmm. of the pre-sale portion will be unlocked and released. Okay. So it's kind of like a drip feed, drip fed yeah, process. For, for anyone who follow BTMX platform token, mm -hmm. um, you know that, um, the token economics I design is, I, I have a very strict principle is we should not have uh, inflation based on nothing. Mm -hmm. Meaning I'm not a big fan of timely or linear distribution of the token. If I distribute one token, there must be a reason why I should distribute mm -hmm. one. Token. Yes. For example, for, for example, BTMX token. So the only way to increase the inf increase security supply is through, um, I would call transaction mining meaning that our reward pool is grow, has grown. I mean, because by transfer mining, you add some uh, more commission fees to the reward pool so that I feel comfortable to release a few tokens because the pool grows, okay. the value of the token grows. However, for UAT, there's only two circumstances that I will increase subscription supply. One is if I list it on a top tier exchange, uh -huh. then I got better liquidity. I mean, for the first one, we got a BMAX liquidity. But if, if I list on Binance, of course, I get better liquidity. So I feel comfortable to uh, release some portion of the token. Okay. I mean, the price will be stabilized because you have better liquidity, so you have more value of the token. That's one thing. Two is if somebody invests in any of the product, we list them on UAT platform. So the platform AUM grows, then the platform value grows. Mm -hmm. Then I feel comfortable to release some portion of the token okay. because the, you know, the platform grows. It's supposed to have more value of circulation supply. Mm -hmm. So that is the core idea behind uh, all my token um, designation. So I'm not a big fan. I was never a big fan of timely distribution. And for example, all of a sudden, three months later, I have a double supply and a circulation supply. But does it really, your, your project has, you know, double the value in yep. three months? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of that. So that's that's the value behind my token economics, okay. the to UAP token economics. So it almost feels like it's uh, it's milestone driven to a certain extent, right? You're not releasing unless there's genuine value that's been brought back into the community, into the ecosystem as such. Yes. If you look at both uh, BTMX and UET token economics and also the project itself, mm -hmm. you will see both projects share, share one common characteristic is they have very strong cash revenue. Mm -hmm. So BTMX, of course, we have commission revenue I mean, every day and when we grow user base, we get more commissions, we get even stronger cash mm -hmm. revenue. That's the core value of BTMX token. And for UAT token, and think of that. If we list, say, down the road, we have just 10 projects or list 30 products on the platform. Mm -hmm. So if half of the product makes money, a profitable, we will, we will see very, very strong demand from the market to purchase UAT tokens. And that is actually the value of UAT token because it is, it's, it's again, it's a very strong cash revenue project. Okay, all right. So, and you touched on it earlier around um, mining, and there was mm -hmm. a mention that there's forty percent allocated uh, for uh, reserve mm -hmm. for mining alone, right? And so, some may be thinking, right? Let me go and find where's my where's my uh, TI NVIDIA TADXI graphics card so I can start turning it on and start mining for uh, UAT tokens. How, how, how does this actual mining work? Because I, I'm, I'm sure it's not a matter of just flicking on a graphics card and, you know, running. <laughs> because, that, because my PC is ready right no, now. I'd, no, I'd point the camera, no, I'll turn no. it on right now if you tell me. But uh, I mean, just, just at a high level, how does this sort of, res uh, this 40% reserve that you've got work exactly? Yeah, sure, please mm -hmm. do that. Yeah, sure. So investment mining means, uh, by investing in any of the products listed on Ultra Club platform, mm -hmm. the investor receive some number of UAT tokens. Okay, I see. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The reason behind that is one is we want to help the project list on UAT to raise money. So by giving investors some incentives, 
So people are more, uh, you know, incentivized to invest in the product. Mm-hmm. That's one thing. However, I would, uh, I would, uh, I would put one thing in emphasis is the ratio of money is dynamically adjustable, just like the money mechanism on the big max. Okay. The reason being that is, for example, if uh, if I found say, if I have a hundred percent return in last month, I would say. You know, we will see millions of dollars want to invest in the fund. Uh-huh. So, but, I mean, if that's the case, giving out to- extra tokens to investors doesn't make any sense anymore because it's already, I'm sure it will be oversubscribed. Mm. So in this case, we will do, um, we will do a reduced, you know, rates, meaning that for any fund performance, if, if for any fund, if it's trying to, if we see the trend for oversubscribing, we kind of lower down. Uh, the mining ratio, meaning that you have less token. In the extreme case, if a fund is seriously oversubscribed, we may want all the investors to pay UAT tokens for a quota to invest in the fund. Okay. So, so for example, like like the extreme example I used before, if a fund returns 100% per month, I'm sure people will pay lots of UAT tokens mm. just to get a quota of that. Of so that, is the, that, is the, that is the idea behind adjustable mining rate it will be the it will adjust by the market itself. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. That was uh, very uh, easy to understand. Um, I, mm-hmm. I do like the way you're you're all approaching and answering the questions. Actually, it's a very straightforward process in terms of just trying to understand because there's so many projects and just to understand the mechanics of many of the projects can be mind boggling at some times. But uh, yeah, I just want to work through you know walk everyone through the, the thinking process behind yeah. the, every single rule I design so people can better understand what we're trying to do. Yeah, no, it, it relates a lot back to, I mean, what, what I do as a profession is around customer experience. It's uh, how users interact with platforms and how the sort of user walks away thinking, was it was this an easy, was this an easy experience for me interacting with UltraFund? And so far from what I'm seeing and so far from the way you're explaining, it, it, it works. I mean, it certainly works for me. Maybe I'm being biased, but, uh, you know, it definitely does work for me overall. Now, Thanks. let's talk a little more about, um, we've got uh, here, I've got my notes. I've got monthly redemption. Right, you got monthly redemption and early redemption. So, can you just explain exactly how how this works and how the mechanics of this works within the overall sort of uh, sure. process? Yeah, monthly redemption means that ten percent of a fund's return every month will be used to buy UAT tokens mm-hmm. on the secondary markets. And early redemption means that if the user redeems the redemption. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, redeems the Alpha platform share in advance, 10 to 30% of the redemption will be used as the transaction fee. Okay. So let, let me, okay, so let, let me just wind that back a bit. So when, when we talk about an early redemption, that if I was to put it into an example, let's just say I've invested in your fund and, you know, the maturity is say six months, right? But for some whatever reason, I, I I need my funds back earlier than that, right? Let's say I need it back in four months. So there's a penalty to a certain. Without calling it a penalty, there is a penalty nonetheless, whichever way you look at it. And I suppose that's what you mean by the early redemption, as in right, I, right. I give back a, a more more than I would have got in terms of from six months. Okay. And yeah. interestingly enough, you use that in order to buy back UAT tokens from the secondary market, as you mentioned before. And you mentioned that they were locked as well, right? Does that mean that you're actually just removing them straight off the market and, and there's no way they can be released ever again? So it becomes more yeah. scarce over time? Yes, it will be sent. I mean, the token, the token, the platform purchase from the secondary market will be sent into a, a special address. We call it permanently locked address, meaning that the token, once they transfer in there, they can never transfer. Okay. Okay. Remove, removes it from circulation supply. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, I, I, I like it. I like it. I won't say anything more than that because I don't want to go into the realms of speculation, but I, li- <laughs> I like the mechanics and I, and I like the thinking around that. Thank okay, you. well, look, I mean, I think um, overall it's uh, it's a very interesting project. I quite like the fact that you're bringing simplicity for fund management into this space, which is certainly which is certainly needed. Um, I come more from a traditional space within within this area. So it's always good to see that overall. Now, I suppose, I mean, there's not really much more to say other than I, I like what you guys are doing and thank you thank both you. for your time to go through this. But I mean, before before we end, 
Is there anything that you'd like to share with the community? Any juicy tidbits or something exclusive? <laughs> or how do we just stay up to date in general to find so out what's there's going on? There's one thing I want to add is mm. it seems like anyone can do a, a, a kind of an asset management platform. Yeah. But that's but that's not true, meaning that, like Christine already mentioned, so in the crypto space, in the digital asset space, there's lack of broker dealer, meaning the, the, the investors and the fund managers are disconnected. So I think the key note to solve this problem is exchange. Because one is we have a, a large client base. So and, uh, we talk to and different fund managers mm-hmm. all the time. So we are actually the natural bridge between between the fund manager and the investors. That's why for any SM platform at this stage, um, if they don't, if they do not partner with the exchange, it's very difficult for them to grow. Um, that's, that is also the reason why uh, why Arch Alpha platform is is partnered with Bimax because we open up our user base to uh, Arch Alpha fund managers. Okay. So that's the unique advantage we have. Hmm. And there, are, apart from this, there are other three advantages that I want to share with you okay. guys. So first of all is our the asset security. So security is always our priority. Mm-hmm. So funds are not allowed to transfer it in any way. And secondly is the level of expertise. Mm-hmm. As I mentioned, our core team of trading, technology, and op- uh, operation are from Wall Street traditional finance. Um, they have a very solid background, very solid experience of quant trading, mm-hmm. uh, very highly efficient operation, and also digital asset investments. And finally, uh, we have the innovative token economics. As I mentioned, uh, our investors can utilize the UAT tokens to um, pay for all the inquiries, mm-hmm. transfer, payment, redemption, and other operational administrative service uh, cost on our platform. Um, so all the UAT used for mm-hmm. the payments are subject to permanent lockups. Excellent. Yeah. Well, on that note, I mean, thank you, Christina. Thank you, George. I, to be honest, I really appreciate you both coming on the channel. I, I really wasn't expecting both of you, to be honest. So that was a, <laughs> that was a surprise that I had a good few hours ago from yeah, Christine. Yeah, because I jump in the last minute. You know. <laughs> Christina was like, hey, for us, just to let you know, uh, we've got a, a special guest coming in. You did ask for someone exclusive. I was like, hey, huh? It's like George is coming. I was like, okay, great. So look, you know what? It, it's, it's wonderful. And I think it's really good to kind of, I'd like to see more of this where projects also bring their advi- advisors on board. Um, and I, I'm not bad mouthing any projects in general, but you know, you get lots of projects saying we've got this person and we've got that person. And sometimes when you see interviews online or AMAs, you only see that one person from the main company, but you don't really see the advisors or some of the partners on board. So it's always nice to see this uh, joint approach. And I, and I hope the market in general and other projects in general learn from this specific channel, my channel, <laughs> where we've done the interview we'll here, first, <laughs> where we kind of roll that out in future. So look, thank you so much. Um, it's thank been you. an absolute blast. I really enjoyed it. I wish you all the success in your project. Thank you. So, thank, thank you everyone for, for joining us. Yeah, Thanks. no, thank, thank you. you. Thank you to the viewers. And don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button and tell everybody that you love Christina and you love George as well. <laughs> Cheers, thank guys. You. See you later. See, See you. Ya.